Previously, we saw how we can transform six of the 20 amino acids into pyruvate. Now we're going to discuss how we can transform five of the 20 amino acids into a five carbon intermediate molecule we call alpha ketoglutarate. Now remember that alpha ketoglutarate is actually intermediate of the citric acid cycle. And what that means is when our liver, our hepatocytes metabolize these five amino acids, glutamate, glutamine, arginine, proline, or histidine, they ultimately form alpha-ketoglutarate, which is then transformed into oxaloacetate, and the oxaloacetate can be used in gluconeogenesis to generate sugar molecules, glucose. And so that's exactly why these five amino acids are labeled as glucogenic. So the strategy here is as follows. So if we begin with glutamate, glutamate can simply be metabolized directly into alpha-ketoglutarate. But if we have either one of these four amino acids shown here, they must first be metabolized into glutamate, and then glutamate is in turn metabolized into alpha-ketoglutarate. So this is the strategy that our cells employ. So let's take a look at how glutamate, uh, glutamate can be transformed into alpha-ketoglutarate. So what's the difference between glutamate and alpha-ketoglutarate? Well, on the glutamate, we have this alpha amino group, but on the alpha-ketoglutarate, we don't. Instead, the carbon is oxidized, and we have this carbon-oxygen double bond between this carbon and this oxygen. So ultimately, in this step, we basically want to remove this alpha amino group along with the H ion. So we ultimately want to remove an ammonium. So we want to undergo a deamination step in which we remove this ammonium and we want to oxidize this carbon. And that's exactly what happens in this step. So this step is catalyzed by glutamate dehydrogenase. It uses the oxidation reduction power of NAD plus to basically eliminate this group and then we attach an oxygen to form the carbon oxygen double bond. So this is our alpha ketoglutarate. Now, what about these other reactions here? So let's take a look at the transformation of glutamine into glutamate. So what's the difference between glutamine and glutamate? Well, the only, different li the only difference lies in this group here. So glutamate looks like this, but glutamine has this amino group attached onto this carbon instead of an oxygen. And so ultimately, we basically want to once again eliminate this amino group. So we want to eliminate ammonium and we want to attach an oxygen. And so this is catalyzed by glutaminase, which uses water to basically remove this ammonium. And we form this oxygen as shown in this molecule. So we form our glutamate. So in metabolizing glutamine to alpha-ketoglutarate, we have to first form glutamate, and then the glutamate is transformed into alpha-ketoglutarate by the activity of this enzyme. Now, let's move on to five, histidine. So histidine has a slightly more complex process in transforming it into glutamate. So let's see what this process is. So this is what histidine looks like. So we have this five-membered ring. And by the activity of the enzyme histidine ammonia lyase, we essentially catalyze a simple elimination reaction in which this amino group acts as the leaving group, we have a pi bond that is formed between this carbon and this carbon, which, which basically acts, acts to kick off this group here, and we form this intermediate molecule, uraconate. So we form a double bond between this carbon and this carbon, eliminating this ammonium. Now, in the next step, we have a simple hydration step. We have a water molecule that basically attacks this carbon here, so we form a double bond between the, uh, this carbon and the oxygen that is attached. We eliminate this pi bond, and we also eliminate this pi bond here. So we form this intermediate molecule. The third step is basically a hydrolysis step. So we have hydroxide, which basically acts as a nuclear file. It attacks 
this carbon breaks this sigma bond here and we attach another oxygen onto this carbon here. And this nitrogen basically gains an H ion. So this is the molecule that we form in the third step. Now, in the final step, we have THF. So THF is tetrahydrofolate. And this is the molecule in the, inside our body that is responsible for acting as a carrier for activated one carbon molecules. And we'll talk about those in a later le uh, lecture. But basically, the tetrahydrofolate acts to basically take off this entire group. So the carbon along with this nitrogen. So this nitrogen gains two more H ions. We basically form our glutamate and this THF, the tetrahydrofolate, abstracts this, forming this molecule here. So once the histidine is transformed into glutamate, then we simply undergo this step that is catalyzed by glutamate dehydrogenase to form the alpha ketoglutarate. So that's five. Now let's look at four. So proline. How do we transform proline into glutamate? Well, this is the reaction process here. So we begin with an enzyme, proline oxidase. So proline oxidase takes proline, uses an oxygen to basically take off this H and this H, and we form a double bond between this nitrogen and this carbon. So we form this intermediate molecule here. Now the problem with this intermediate molecule is we have a double bond between this atom and this atom, and that greatly increases the energy of this molecule, it makes it very unstable. In fact, it becomes so unstable that in the presence of water, it basically spontaneously breaks. So this ring spontaneously opens up and breaks. And so the oxygen here essentially attacks this carbon, forming this carbon-oxygen double bond. And the two H's go onto this nitrogen here. So we form this glutamate semi-aldehyde. Now, the glutamate semi-aldehyde is actually important, as we'll see in just a moment when we'll discuss arginine, because arginine also goes through this intermediate glutamate semi-aldehyde. Now, in the final step, we have an oxidation reduction reaction in which we essentially remove this H, attach an oxygen to form our glutamate. So once we form the glutamate, again, the glutamate is then transformed into alpha ketoglutarate. Now, I didn't show the mechanism on the board, but let's briefly talk about the mechanism by which arginine is transformed into glutamate. So arginine is initially transformed into ornithine by the enzyme arginase. And this is independent of the urea cycle, because remember, in the urea cycle, we also transform arginine into ornithine by the activity of arginase. But this happens uh, separate of the urea cycle. So once arginine is transformed into ornithine, the ornithine then acts as a substrate for the enzyme ornithine aminotransferase. And what that enzyme does is it transforms that ornithine into glutamate semi-aldehyde. And then the glutamate semi-aldehyde is transformed into glutamate via this step here. And so ultimately we form that glutamate and then we use this process here to form the alpha ketoglutarate. So we see that these four amino acids are transformed into glutamate. And then glutamate is transformed into alpha ketoglutarate and this can be used by our liver cells to actually generate glucose. And so that's why these five enzymes are known as glucogenic, uh, sorry, these five amino acids are known as glucogenic amino acids. 